Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate the Cirrus SR22 flight simulator using Microsoft FSX. Equally, it could be run on prepared 3D by Lockheed Martin. Here we go. As you can see, you can do the walk around just like you can with a real aircraft. The engine's running, the pilot's in place. Here's the cockpit. You can see all the controls are exactly like the real Cirrus. Press the bezel to continue. As a real world Cirrus pilot, I've flown this many times and you've got all the features on there, MFD, exactly the same as the real plane. So, we've done all the pre-flight checks, but if you wanted to go through the checklist, it's pretty much identical to the real aircraft. With all the checklists, you tick the items that are done and selected, power up to 1700, go across to here, check the rev drop, that's fine check at this point that we're charging and that's good everything's looking good go to tick over we're safe to take off now we're going to do an instrument approach today at south end on runway um, 06 and as you can see we're pretty well lined up already on runway 06 so i'm going to select one stage of flap which we do with the joystick here or we can do it with the mouse and we're going to take off here we go and we're close to rotation speed and we rotate flaps up get the climb speed in the Cirrus to about 10 degrees trim get the trim exactly right and there we're in a nice climb as you can see not using the autopilot at this time so I'm going to view go back to the MFD to see what we're doing final approach says climb to 1500 then left turn back to the localizer so we'll climb to 1500 and you can see on the altimeter we're close to 1500 and we'll collect, commence a right hand turn we'll go to the range rings and get it in so we can see clearly 1500 and we'll do a right turn back to the localizer quick look out of the window we can see the fields below south end it's all looking fine real photographic scenery just like google earth and you can see everything's fine and dandy for the airframe quick look behind us everything's looking just fine so remember we're actually continuing this turn to 2500 as the read approach chart shows us to intercept um India Alpha Foxtrot, which is the localizer for South End. We don't want to exceed the rate one turn for instruments, and you can see we've already gone too high, so we'll lower the nose, bring the speed back to about 40%, get back to 2500 feet, and keep the turn going around here to get to the localizer, and you can see from that. Here we are, we're now approaching South End EGMC, we should be at 2500 feet doesn't matter for the purposes of this because we're going to be um, demonstrating. So at this point, I think what we'll do is we'll switch the autopilot on. It's on there and we will centerize with the heading bug there and we'll go heading, heading and out. And that should put us on autopilot. And as you can see, nicely flying on the autopilot on heading mode. We're going outbound on to um, 252 so we really should turn at this point and take the autopilot off IAF that's overhead as you can see we're past the overhead we've gone past it so we're going to turn for the outbound leg at 252 so we change the heading bug here round to 252 now you can see here this dotted line actually shows us the course made good over the land and allows for the wind drift which you see in the wind vector just like the real world aircraft we've got 134 degrees 17 knots and we're actually heading 252 and this line shows us track made good which is very very useful in the Cirrus for doing accurate approaches we've identified the IAF is in fact picked up so we'll turn the ident off now we're on the outbound leg and according to the Garmin chart we should be descending to 1500 to intercept radial 055 India Alpha Foxtrot. So here we go, quick look out of the window, the Thames behind us there, there's South End Seafront behind us and the other side you'll be able to look down 
over to Rayleigh and the, the woods below. And you can zoom in and look like you can't really on the real plane. Do a direct to EGMC. That will now tell us that we're 3.8 miles from EGMC and we need to be turning at 6.9. You'll notice the cross over there. That shows us that we're actually slightly off course. Uh, we've made that turn too late and so therefore we'll go to a wider berth just to get that teardrop the right shape. We'll start the turn now because we don't actually need to be at 1500 until we've completed the turn. A rate one turn so we don't exceed the blue just like in the real aircraft. Now we're levelling at 1500. Here we come round nicely. Until that green is right round to there, we're not on the correct instrument approach. So we'll stop the turn, just like in the real aircraft, to point to the top of the pole there. On that dotted line, which is, shows the wind vector, and you can see I've overshot the altitude again. As soon as that line starts to move across, that will show us that we are crossing the centre line and we can do a safe approach. So this is just like any commercial aircraft would do or any general aviation pilot doing an instrument approach into South End using the ILS. At 3.9D we're going to intercept the glide slope and you'll see that happen in just a moment. I've located a proper DME here from a Cessna and you can see we're 4.4D on the ADF here, DME, which is legal and on the I on the GPS we're 4.5 so that demonstrates the discrepancy. Here the localizer's coming in, cut the power, one stage of flap, nose down and trim. And you can see the papis which are showing three red, one white. So we're slightly, slightly low. Put a bit more power on to gain altitude. One stage of flap. I'm planning to make my decision height 555. And don't forget in the real world we wouldn't be able to see the ground, we'd be flying purely by reference to this instrument because we could have cloud. And we could in the simulator demonstrate a total cloud-based cover or any crosswind we like. I'm at my decision height for an IMC pilot, so we're now visual. Power off, full stage of flap, and retrim. And at this point, we really want to get the landing accurate. We should be over the fence on the Cirrus at 75 knots. There. Perfect landing, full flaps off, nose up, keep it coming, keep it coming, and you can see from the outside view now, there we are. And let's do a little bit of a scenic flight to demonstrate the sort of scenery that's available at this flight simulator. I like to use this simulator for exploring different parts of the UK because you can go places like Snowdon, you can go explore coastline and you can see what it's like on the ground in these places. That's quite a useful view because although you're not seeing out of the cockpit, you can at any time pause and take a look around what's below you, just like Google Earth. For the airfield itself, they've added some graphics in for the terminal buildings that have recently been built. We can fly off down the Thames and look at London. And we can even put the simulation right onto eight times, 16 times, eight times it gets hard to control, 16 times gets even harder to control, but you can get places really fast with it, 16 times, there we are. Frankly, I find it a miracle that it works at all. The River Crouch. The docks at Grey Thurrock. Victoria Bridge, 16 times speed, and is the City of London, Canary Wharf, so we get busted if we did this for real. You can see the gherkin ahead, Tower Bridge, something I'd love to do, I'm just about to try now, there we go, look at that. We're now very low over the Thames. Some pools coming up. Here's Big Ben, Buckingham Palace. Low pass over Heathrow. 
Windsor Castle. Dodging the clouds around Heathrow. On autopilot over to Valley. So we can sit back and enjoy the flight. Now we're flying at 16 times speed to get us there quickly in Snowdonia over the mountains and look at the lakes. Uh, what a great way it is to explore the mountains. And you can find out by pausing and looking at the map exactly where you are. Uh, so if you want to go and visit it on the ground, you can at a later time. So you can see we're heading west now. What a beautiful spot that is, look at that. It would be really nice to go on a walking holiday there. And you know, this is, in my opinion, equal to Google Earth quality. If we simulate an engine failure on this plane, we'll actually turn off the engine by pulling the mixture back. There. Now we've got an engine failure and I've got to put the plane down somewhere. So let's see where is a good place to land it. Right ahead, full flaps, coming in for a landing. We're pretty fast still. So there we are, coming in nicely, and when we know, we can actually make the landing. And here, engine out landing, 200 feet, we're committed to the landing, 78 knots, 75, coming in nicely. And that would be a safe landing to walk away from. A bit of mountain flying and an engine out failure. Thank you very much for watching.